Hi, welcome to Property and House Trader. We're talking about the conveyance. We've been through the first part, and that's the preparation of the contract, and we've gone through that with Liz from Key2 Conveyancing. Now the exciting thing that's happened is the property is sold. So we're going to go back to Liz, and she'll tell us what happens now. This is often a really exciting part of the sale process for an owner because they've accepted an offer on the property and they want to know everything. They want to know when they're going to get paid, what's going to happen next. Basically what, what will generally happen and what we tell our clients is that at this point in time what they've done is actually just accepted an offer on their property. The exchange of contracts is a really, really critical point in the sale. This is the point at which the contract becomes legally binding on both the seller and the buyer. So it's the point at which the seller must proceed legally and the buyer must proceed legally. And generally what will happen is that the agent will provide us with a sales particulars which will set out the details of who the buyer is, who's acting for the buyer, what the agreed price is, any particular agreement in relation to possibly settlement dates or inclusions, which we'll come back to in a minute. And the owner's conveyancer or sister will prepare two contracts. The purchaser will sign one copy and the owner will sign one copy. And then it's those two contracts that are actually dated and then the exchange takes place. The contract signed by the owner is returned to the buyer's conveyancer and the contract signed by the buyer is retained, of course, by the owner's conveyancer. And that's the actual point of physical exchange. Now what must also happen at that time is payment of deposit. The purchaser must pay their deposit on or before that point of exchange. Really important, if they don't, the contract of course can be terminated by the vendor, so it's really quite serious. Now the other issue that a, an owner must be aware of at that point of exchange is any rights that the buyer may have in relation to a cooling off period. So we mentioned that um, briefly when we were talking about preparing a marketing contract. And just to go over that again, when a buyer purchases residential property, they can have a five day cooling off period which starts from the date of exchange and finishes five business days after the date of exchange. So for example, if contracts are exchanged on a Monday, the cooling off period will expire at five o'clock the following Monday. Now it is possible to have that cooling off period waived, so the owner will give their conveyancer instructions as to whether they would like that cooling off period waived and a buyer can normally agree to waive it if they've done all the things they need to do before the point of exchange, such as arranging their finance or their pre-purchase inspection reports. Really importantly though is if the property is sold at auction, there will be no cooling off period applicable. Now, a cooling off period doesn't apply to an owner. An owner does not have the benefit of a cooling off period. It's simply a right that is applicable to a buyer or available to a buyer only. A um, couple of important issues to raise with the owner before actually exchanging contracts is a mortgage. Does the owner have a mortgage on the property and have they considered that when they've accepted an offer? Because it's really important that they have enough funds from sale to pay out that mortgage, otherwise they can't settle and they're in, in big trouble if that happens. Another issue for an owner will be, are they going to be buying another property when they sell this one? And if they are, do they need to coordinate the two matters to settle together? So that has to be considered when, at the time, the owner is signing their contract and before they exchange. Settlement date we, I mentioned earlier. Settlement date's a really important date for both parties. And it's a date that has to be agreed upon by both parties. So you might get a vendor who comes in and says, well, I'm selling, I want to dictate the, the settlement date. But really, it is one of those terms that can be negotiated and is often negotiated by the agent at the time of the sale. But it must be in the contract before we exchange an, an agreed date. So they're the really, really important issues to consider before you exchange. Once you do exchange, the terms of the contract are set and, and the vendor and the, the buyer must proceed on those terms. So hopefully that sort of explains a little bit of how it works and um, what will happen once the owner has accepted an offer that their agent has achieved for them. Thanks Liz, that was great. It's getting really exciting now. The next bit is the settlement. So we'll come back next week and we'll talk about that.